Chapter 246 Halal Rape vs. Haram Rape, Part 6 Mr. Osman al Taib arrived at the house of his brother-in-law, Omar, an hour earlier than the scheduled time for the emergency meeting. He is accompanied by Miss Zakia, whom he introduced as his personal secretary. The nurse informed the family members that her boss is suffering from serious lip sickness and she will act as his mouthpiece. Through her the old man had a confidential talk with his brother-in-law. He also made a phone call to Inspector Hussein and requested him at least to attend the meeting without participating in it. The police inspector strongly refused to accept the request, but he agreed to come an hour later after the meeting is over. The old man further suggested that all the other members should be told that Omar had been forced to include them in his confession papers. For that will make them willing to take any trouble necessary in order to see those papers returned. Inspector Hussein and Omar welcomed the old man's idea. Mr. Majhub al-Halali came 15 minutes late. The main excuse for his delay is that he can't miss an 8 to 7 o'clock TV serial. Mr. Osman al Taib considered his excuse as silly, and showed him what an irresponsible politician he is. At 8.20 p.m. they received a phone call from the virtuous Mu'alana Sheikh Marzouk. He too apologized, for his unavoidable delay, which is caused by the evening prayer. Being the Imam, he can't help it, but had to lead his congregation in the last prayer for the day. He further told them that he had just finished the five minutes prayer and he will be with them shortly. Taking those delays into consideration, Mr. Osman al Taib declared officially that their emergency meeting should be postponed until 9 p.m. Nevertheless, Mu'alana had reached the house at 9.10 p.m. He said his further delay is caused by the traffic jam. Two minutes later Inspector Hussein presented himself. He regretted that he came before the meeting is over and is about to withdraw himself if Mr. Osman al Taib isn't swore to divorce his new wife. The police inspector is forced to attend the meeting. When everyone came except the man of clean business, Mr. Osman al Taib looked at his watch which showed 9.20 p.m. So he concluded that Hajj Mohammed had either met with an accident and died on the spot, or received a heart attack, or robbers broke into his house and killed him or a madman stabbed him to death, or he is arrested by the police authority, or for a reason only known to God. The old man pointed his hand to the virtuous Mu'alana Sheikh Marzoak to start the meeting with reciting some verses from the Holy Quran. The Imam recited the shortest surah he knew. Mr. Osman al Taib wrote a small note and gave it to his secretary. The nurse took the paper and changed her seat and sat close to the old man. She cleared her throat, and is about to read the opening words of the emergency meeting, but she stopped when she heard a heavy knocking on the outside door. She looked at her boss who indicated to her to hold on. Someone, most probably the mother had opened the door. The loud voice of Hajj Mohammed is heard greeting the mother. A few seconds later the man of clean business presented himself in the midst of the evildoers. With a big smile on his face he said, Please forgive me my friends, for my delay is neither my fault nor anyone else's fault. When he saw every face is looking angry at him, he seated himself and continued his words, Hear my story and judge for yourselves. I finished with the last visitor at 6.30 p.m. An hour and a half before my usual time. I rushed to the bathroom and took a quick shower. I made myself ready to leave my home by 7.15 p.m. I took my car keys and walked towards the outside door. While I was approaching the door I heard a heavy knocking upon it. I opened the door and looked outside. To my surprise I saw the most rich and beautiful two young girls that I have ever seen in my life. One is 15 years old as Mr. Osman al Taib's new wife and the other is 17 as Mr. Majhub al-Halali's daughter-in-law. The eyes of the 15-year-old are full of tears. She is decked with gold from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. As you know, I can't see a young girl in tears and my heart not cry with her. I put my hands on her smooth cheeks and wiped away her tears. But more tears came rolling down on her soft cheeks. 
my heart cried the more with her. Her friend, who is not inferior to her in beauty and richness said to me, Haj Mohammed have mercy on my friend Jamila. Her life or death is in your hands. My daughter, said I to her, can you bring your friend tomorrow morning? I promise you I will take her in as the first visitor. Right now I am on my way to an emergency meeting with very important people. I can't postpone or cancel my going. When I said so, Jamila fell at my feet and watered them with her tears. My heart melted within me. I knelt down and lifted her up. I looked at her face and I saw the agony and sorrow in her beautiful eyes. She said to me with her sweet voice, it is better to kill me than to leave me in such agony. Those words broke my heart, but still I reminded myself that I am a man and when a man makes a promise, he must keep his words. I told her, my daughter I know that you have great sorrow, but I also, have a great appointment. Her friend said to me, Hajj Mohammed take us with you in your car. I know how to drive, I will drive your car. Sit in the back seat with Jamila and listen to her problem. She will whisper it to you in your ears. I said to her, my daughter I am a well-known man. In every street and corner in this city I have friends and enemies. What will they say when they see me being driven around by a young beautiful girl, as you and in the back seat, the most beautiful girl I have ever seen whispering in my ear? When I said so, Jamila fell again at my feet and began to cry loudly. I said to myself, if I leave her in such agony and go and she kills herself, I will spend the rest of my clean and pure life with a troubled conscience. Wherefore, I took her by her waist and lifted her up. When I told her that I will solve her problem, she put her hands around me, and she refused to remove them. I asked her friend to convince her to take off her hands. Her friend tried, but Jamila refused to listen to her either. She said to me, I think she is feeling secure in that position. So I put my hands around Jamila's waist and led her to my private chamber. Her friend sat in the waiting room, because Jamila didn't want anyone to know her problem except me and Ella. I shut the door behind us. We sat together on a mattress. When we are all alone, she opened her mouth and began to tell her problem. The words came out of her mouth and entered my attentive ears as soft music. We spent an hour together in a heart-to-heart -heart talk. But in all that time, she neither removed her hands from me, nor allowed me to do so. When we finished, her face began to shine as the face of an angel. She said to me, Hajj Mohammed I will strip myself from all the gold I am wearing and give it to you. I said to her, don't do that now. Immediately I excused myself and rushed here. Mualana Sheikh Marzoak who is more interested in the story than the others said to Hajj Mohammed. Will you please explain to us the girl's problem and exactly how it took an hour of your precious time? Before the Hajj can reply to the virtuous man, a heavy knocking is heard on the outside door. The mother opened the door. The assembled members waited to see who had come so late. When no one showed himself, Omar shouted to his mother and asked her about the late comer. The mother shouted back and told him it is his sister Badaria. At the same time, the wall clock struck ten times. The mother scolded Badaria for coming so late. She told her to go and stand by the back window and listen to their talk and come and report to her. The mother is doing that before her daughter came, but she felt relief from that difficult task. Badaria drank some water and snatched a big sandwich from the maidservant's hands and ran to the window and replaced her mother for the next shift. With her mouth busy chewing the big sandwich, she put her ears as close as possible to hear the conspirators' conversation. From her position, she can hear every word spoken, but she can't see the speaker. When her ears became attentive to their talk she heard, a young woman's voice is speaking in this manner. First of all, shouted the woman, you must know the reason of our emergency meeting. 
the matter which we are going to discuss tonight and find a proper solution for it is very urgent, which compelled me to discontinue my honeymoon and leave my sweet wife alone in the hotel and rushed here. Bataria is astonished when she heard the woman had claimed that she had a sweet wife. How can she have a sweet wife and go for honeymoon with her? No possible answer is found for such a strange claim by Bataria's mind. My wife was so angry with me, continued the female voice, she told me that she will prefer to be divorced than left alone in the hotel. Bataria is fully convinced by now that the speaker is a woman who married to another woman. Her mind strongly rejected such a possibility because she knew that gay marriage is not yet legalized in Sudan. Even though this happened, I took a risk and left my sweet wife alone in the hotel and came here. My expectation is that all of you should come here in time. But unfortunately, none of you has come in time. I had informed Omar to tell you that the meeting is very urgent and extremely important. It is a question of life and death for all of us. I had planned to come for the meeting and return via 10.30 p.m. flight. My wife had strictly warned me if the sun rose and she did not find me beside her, she will either force me to divorce her or never allow me to sleep with her again in the same bed. For that reason, I booked my return ticket for a 10.30 p.m. flight. Bataria is listening carefully to the woman's voice and in her mind she is trying to imagine how she will look in the bed with her wife. There is a dead silence for three minutes. Bataria wondered as to what had happened. She heard again the feminine voice break the silence. This time the voice had increased five times louder than before. Look at your watches, screamed the woman. According to my watch the time is 10.10. I just feel like getting up, calling off the meeting, catching my flight, and return to my beloved wife and then let every one of you go to jail tomorrow. Another two minutes of silence are followed. The woman voice continued to speak. One said he can't help it, but had to watch a TV serial. Another had to conduct a prayer. Yet another came one and half hour late because two young women captivated his heart. All these are silly excuses and show how irresponsible people you are. One calls himself a political leader. Another religious leader. And yet another claims to be a social counselor. Imagine that, you are the people who are supposed to lead the country into the future. If you can't show yourselves responsible in a small meeting such as this, what will you do when you go for the parliament? Another three minutes of silence followed. Bataria made a quick matching of words on her fingers. On one hand she counted the positions and on the other the names. Right hand. Left hand. Political leader. Mr. Majub al Hilali. Religious leader. Mualana Sheikh Marzouak. Social counselor. Hajj Mohammed. The result of her matching revealed to her that the most important of all the conspirators is missing. She concluded that the woman voice is the voice of Mr. Osman al Taib. But her mind immediately rejected such an impossible possibility. How can such a sweet feminine voice be the harsh voice of the old man? Her reasoning is disturbed by the woman voice. Why should I trouble myself about the future of the country when the citizens themselves put you in such important positions? Another two minutes of silence followed those words. Those minutes of break created another mystery in Bataria's mind. Why should the sweet voice every now and then cease to speak for a few minutes? No possible answer is found for that question either. The woman voice broke the silence again. Now let us return to our emergency meeting. As you have been all informed, this is a crucial time for all of us. The matter which we are about to discuss is extremely important for everybody present here. Those vagabonds, when they saw that we had defeated them at the Sharia court, they resorted to blackmailing. They sent a young man by the name of Walid Hamza who is not less than them in his wickedness and subtlety. Bataria felt as if a sharp knife pricked her heart when she heard her boyfriend is so unjustly being spoken of. 
This wicked person came here two days ago and claimed to be the good citizen who directed Police Inspector Hussein to the recent kidnap and rape crime of the innocent girl. He forced Omar to write two confessional papers. In the first paper Omar confessed his involvement in the crime. In the second paper he mentioned that he is arrested and set free by Inspector Hussein, due to the heavy bribe which is paid jointly by Mr. Osman al Taib, Mr. Majhub al Halali, Mu'alan Ashik Marzoak, and Hatch Mohammed Abakar Mursal. When the woman said those words, Badaria heard uproar inside the room. Many voices are shouting out curses and bad words. She heard first Mu'alan Ashik Marzoak is screaming at the top of his voice. The curse of Allah and his angels be upon him and upon his family. She heard the man of clean business saying loudly, That son of a bitch, I will send my servants to him and I will make him run in the streets bare naked. The uproar is suddenly brought to a dead silence, when Badaria heard a loud bang on the table. The bang is followed by another powerful bang. The woman voice is heard screaming in anger. Cowards, stop it! We are all involved in this problem. We should either solve it or go to jail together." A dead silence followed. Badaria had her doubts again. How can the woman possess such physical strength? No answer is found for her question. This blackmailer has two demands. He demands 10 million Sudanese pounds and Omar's sister, Badaria. Excuse me sir, said the voice of Mu'alana. He wants Omar's sister as a wife or a slave or a servant. You have been a Mu'alana for more than thirty years. Responded the feminine voice, and have not yet understood for what reason a man desires a woman. To fulfill these three needs a man desires a woman. Badaria is very much annoyed when she heard the woman's reply to Mu'alana's question. I don't care what the blackmailer will do with the girl. That is his demand and we must fulfill it or otherwise go to jail. When we give her to him, it is up to him to marry her or enslave her or make her his maidservant. I am ready to pay the money and Omar agreed to hand over his sister. Now you three gentlemen go tomorrow and meet those vagabonds and settle the deal with them. What will we do if they refuse to hand over the papers, asked the voice of Mr. Majhub al-Halali. Inspector Hussein will accompany you and will show some papers as issued by Mu'alana of the Sharia court. According to those papers he will force Intisar to follow him to her husband's house. When we have Intisar in our hands we can threaten them to hand over the papers or we will rape and kill her. Are you serious about your threat? asked Mr. Majhub al-Halali. Yes of course I am serious, or do you want us to go to jail? Please friends don't include me in such a wicked business. I am well known as the man of clean business. How can I hand over a girl to be raped or killed, said the voice of Hatch Mohammed. I will also like to be excluded from this deal, said the voice of Mu'alan Ashik Marzoak. I don't think, it is a wise thing to do, what Mr. Osman al Taib has suggested said the politician's voice. I have a good idea, said Hatch Mohammed we should cancel the two marriages contracts. I think that is the only choice we are left with the Hatch made the above suggestion because he remembered his promise to Saham, Frida. Moreover, the Hatch knew and understood that he will not lose anything. But in response to his suggestion, Badaria heard a very powerful bang on the table that caused her to jump from her hiding place. It also brought a dead silence inside the room. The silence is prolonged to five minutes. Badria thought that the members had fled away due to fear and left the angry woman alone. Her thought is proved wrong when she heard suddenly the woman's sweet voice is screaming loudly. I swear by the great Allah and by the divorce of my three wives that I will not release my wife Firdaus. No amount of threat whatever, can force me to be separated from her. She is my lawful wife and as long as I live she will remain in my ropes. Even if I have to spend the rest of my life in jail, she will still continue to be my wife. How can I allow another man to sleep with my wife? Answer me. Will you allow one of your wives to spend five minutes with another man alone? We seek refuge in Allah from the work of Satan, 
said the voice of Mualana. How can we allow that? The Prophet himself will not allow that to happen because he said, no man and woman can be alone without the devil be their third partner. Listen carefully to this plan, continued the woman in an angry voice, no suggestion or objection or change is allowed. It has to be carried out as it is. Here are three checks drawn in Mu'alana's, Hajj Mohammed's and Mr. Majhub al-Halali's names. Tomorrow by 8.30 a.m., the bank will open. After the money is withdrawn from the bank, all of you including Inspector Hussein, should come here and demand Badria from her mother. I need some explanation, said Mr. Majhub al-Halali, how are we going to convince the mother to allow her daughter to accompany us to a stranger whom she doesn't know or have never seen? Who asked you to convince the mother or her daughter? What you have to do, is just to show them an obedience sentence order issued by Mu'alana of the Sharia court. Where is that obedience sentence, asked Mu'alana Sheikh Marzoak. You don't need to bother yourself about that. I will arrange that myself. What is important now is to contract the girl with the blackmailer. Where that blackmailer is now, asked Hajj Mohammed. Inspector Hussein can sign instead of him. We have the Mu'alana and the Wali and three witnesses. What is missing? How can we do that without taking into consideration the girl's reaction or even her mother's objection? Said Mr. Majhub al-Halali. Excuse me sir, said the woman voice sarcastically, why didn't you think about that girl and her mother when you contracted her in marriage to your son? Badria is listening in great astonishment to the foregoing discussion. A silence of fifteen minutes followed. During that period she knew she has been contracted in marriage to Walid. She liked the idea, but hated the way she is given in marriage. She understood that she is no more a single, but a married girl. She began to laugh and cry at the same time. With that ambivalent mixture of passion, she left her hiding place and walked to her room and closed the door behind her.